Hello everybody, welcome to the Wonder Year podcast with me, Paddy Raff, and joining me is also Riggsy, the producer and co-host. And co-host. I'm not I've saying got, sort of anymore. Officially got my upgrade, I have chipped away. Uh, chipped in no extra pay but <laughs> no extra yeah, it's, it's mainly in name uh, but I'm happy enough with that you know all good yeah so we're, we're this is we'll get straight into the podcast as quickly as we can but we'll obviously have to do a few wee shout outs for sponsors and stuff this uh, week's podcast is with Emer Maguire a brilliant stand up comedian from here quite musical like myself but she does a lot of her own sort of musical so I do a lot of parodies obviously but she, right, go check her out she's going to be in the Mac Theatre up yeah. the high dose the name of her show in the Mac on the 18th of of November. Yeah, you just do parties. She writes her own songs. She writes her own ones. I know. I've, I've a sender. I have to. I have to get a few tips off her. I'm going to start doing that myself, mainly because it's a nightmare for copyright. <laughs> but uh, yes, just shout out to our sponsor, Victoria Square. Great guys. Wrigley obviously loves Victoria Square. Frequents it. Loiters in Victoria Square. They want us to push the gift card. Very happy to let you know that the gift card doesn't just work in House of Fraser and all the other wonderful shops. You can use it for the many restaurants. You get your five guys, you got your Wagamama, or you can go use it to go to the movies. Or if, you, if you've got a generous enough mate, maybe all three, what a day out that would be. Yeah, what depends a, how what much is on it. You have to have a few million on it to get a burger in five guys, though. But it's worth it. Every, every penny. penny. <laughs> <laughs> every piece of plastic on the gift card is worth it. Uh, yeah, and also we shout out to you off the wall for the brilliant signage that they've given us for the show. Um, yeah, Amer's podcast uh, is great. Loved having her on it. She was chatting about, her year was 2003. 2003. So she talks a lot about uh, getting dressed up for confirmation. Her first very dodgy um, song lyrics, which is really funny. And then I have the power of editing of this podcast as a producer. And I don't doubt you listen to them going on so you probably don't know what is included I can't in remember song. I can't yeah. listen to myself but there is a very um, <laughs> dubious story that I end up telling part of the reason why I've been upgraded to co-host um, is it, I don't know whether I'm going to include it or not <laughs> okay because it's 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 humiliating especially if my parents are listening and my mum oh, is oh yes I remember when you're on about now yeah. so it's at the very end um <laughs> I haven't quite made the decision because we haven't edited the episode yet <laughs> if it's there you'll know it when it comes yeah but the feedback's been great in the first few episodes we're delighted yes thanks for listening everybody and um, it's going to be we're going to grow the podcast we'd like that we just put it out there and people come to it themselves but we want you guys to get behind it and share it with friends and family uh, it's everybody's you know giving us great feedback they might be landers I am very wary of that but um, these are people within my family who would tell me if it was crap and everybody seems to love it. So thanks very much for getting on board with it. Um, so yeah, this week's podcast uh, is with Emer. The Wonder Year, her Wonder Year is 2003. Have a wee listen, see what you think. The Wonder Year. 2003, I was in my last year of primary school. I was a big P7, um, and kind of a, a lot of people uh, will know that the focus of that year is the the confirmation. You know, it's a big event. Yes. Um, and I was very excited this is for, for non Catholics out there. This yes. is where I mean, I, I mean, I think I think uh, non non Catholics do do it as well, but maybe a bit later. Really, they're a little bit older. I think so. I mean, someone can fact check that for us. Are they pending? For longer than, than I think they might be buffering for that, long. You know, it takes a longer time Rizzi, to have let you them any in. Idea about this? Is this that goes above my pay grade. We as need to get your well, get you we on some sort of you know sort of. <laughs> we need a more cross community light. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to find out. So, so yeah, so this is your so yeah, you and ready I was for confirmation. getting ready for confirmation. What Very was your exciting. confirmation name? I thought we were going to say my confirmation outfit, which was the important part, but my confirmation <laughs> name um, was. Anne, nearly couldn't Anne. remember, okay. which is my my mum's name. Right. Um, Don't so give any more away because like data protection is what your your passwords are based on. What was your mum's confirmation? True, name you know, you're like, uh, what was her maiden name? What yeah. was your, your first so pet's you name? Anne. So I was I was Anne, which is um, very very creative of me. But I was really excited about it because in primary school, getting ready to go to big school, kind of had this big thing happen in the confirmation, and I was really excited about it because it was like. A big money making racket, you know. That's where you <laughs> it's your first job, really. Yeah. You know, you see, because so, you, you kind of sleep in on communions. You don't realize the value of money when you do your communion, yeah, and you yeah. get a lot. And then that's at the age where your ma can kind of steal the money. Exactly. And you don't, you get, but when you're coming to confirmation, you're a bit more frugal. I remember I got eighty six pound, and uh, I don't think I ever saw a penny of it. No, for your, I, for your holy communion. For my communion, and yeah. I think when we said it was spent on the electricity, I think they were, you know, so. Ah, uh, it's in like an offshore account somewhere. <laughs> it's she, it was a night out for her. I, I think that's true, actually. For holy communion, um, 
Now that you say, I must have a word with Anne about that because now that you say that, I think you're not prepared for the for the prophet after the communion because mm. you're 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 too young. But um, for confirmation, I have big plans for the money, you know. And uh-huh. I was gonna, it was kind of the first step in my career of being a musician. I was gonna buy my first guitar, and so you, you had know, it all. You had the plans. I had it mapped confirmation out. Confirmation was planned part out, of yeah, your manifestation yeah. of who you were going to become. Yeah. And yeah. so, what about the outfit? You kind of mentioned the outfit and then moved on. Was this a big thing? Well, it was a big, I mean, is it a big thing for boys as well? I don't know. I think mm-hmm. it, it, it was in Strabane anyway, but um, it was a really big thing for the for the girls. And I was very excited because Holy Communion, I hated the outfit. It was a white dress, obviously. Mm-hmm. And my mum made it. And um, <clears throat> she had made it for my sister, who actually was in P4 when she got Holy Communion or whatever the <laughs> verb is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, to be communion. Yes, she was a very big P4. But my year it was P three, and I was she a very was small P three. That's the most <laughs> Northern Irish thing. She was a very big P four. No, she now. was a big P four. Yeah, she was shopping in Dunn's Woman's, and uh, she was <laughs> she was big garlic. And um, so my mum made her this huge dress. So uh, she then had to give it to me because, of course, I'm not going to get a, a new Holy Communion dress. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, yeah, I hated that so much, and I was every single photo. I kind of tried to do like a, a weird face so that we, they would never be shown to the public. <laughs> so for by the time I got to my confirmation, I had this real thing that I could wear what I want. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited. So I chose, um, I was quite avant-garde, I feel, in my, my choice. So I chose like um, beige f- flares. Beige flares. Beige flares. Um, but instead of having a button, they tied together the whole way up the crotch. Like, Sounds like, like a 1970s. Christina Aguilera kind of... Um, oh, okay. What's that song that she has? Dirty. Dirty, yes, yes. yes. So I thought that was appropriate. Um, <laughs> and I wore, I wore uh, 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 also a beige. I just, I actually looked naked. I wore a beige T-shirt from Dunn's as well, I think. Um, sponsored by Dunn's. And then I wore this really over-the-top De- thick denim jacket that was lined with faux fur and a big faux fur collar um, and my mum took my hairdressers and I got a f- French plait with my hair because I was so boyish that was all I could cope with and I topped it off with a um, I wouldn't call it a trilby but I definitely wore a hat <laughs> do you know like you have to have pictures of this and if you do oh I do have pictures right, of we'll, it we'll put these pictures in after for a visual <laughs> treat for anybody that wants to check this yeah, out yeah so it was it was, I was fashionable from young age and so after all that after the flamboyance of planning mm-hmm. such an amazing statement piece that mm-hmm. you were going to wear that's what it was yeah you, you chose Anne I did choose that because... Anne doesn't... This doesn't, like, see, sort of square off with it. I know, but what I wanted to do was kind of, you know, combine the contemporary with the, the classic, very you know? Good, so yeah. I was trying old to do new. that. And also, it was kind of like an ode to my mother, and I thought she'd be very emotional about the whole thing. She doesn't seem to care. I don't think she even knows that's my, my confirmation <laughs> name, but um, I thought that was, you know, like, the right thing to do, to choose your mother's name. She'd be delighted. Ah, it was a lovely wee tribute. It was a wee before tribute. Before you went and chose... Uh, comic book characters sort of garb. exactly and it actually gave me quite cool uh initials so oh. you know it, it made my initials eat them like the cheese which <laughs> i really <laughs> really you dressed up liked, as? yes <laughs> which i practically did dress up <laughs> oh that's a brilliant one. i'll have to come wait to see the pictures i think i chose for my confirmation my confirmation name was right so i was i sport man united and when mm-hmm. i was a kid there was a guy from RRU who played for Man United when we were like really young, oh, wow. Mal Donaghy. And I chose Mal as my confirmation name. That's cool. And it was nobody else thought it was cool. And I remember like everybody's like, Mal? Everybody's face. Like, and even whenever you went up to the priest, you know, and like yeah, you're, yeah. you've got the, your sponsor, yeah. my uncle, and was like, What name does this child choose? And he was like, Mal. <laughs> <laughs> and the priest just kind of like looked and just like shrugged their shoulders, like, all right, whatever. <laughs> and they played away. Then. So Mal. I quite Mike. like that. It was a f- like formality or is Malachi, it just Mal- yeah, Mal- I like Malachi I thought you were going to say like Cristiano or something. Or, no, that would have been or, Jesus, you know, Yeah, that would have been class. That would have been cool. Very flamboyant. Yeah. So 2003, you were P7 yes. going into first year. And what, yeah. were, what were you, aside from, you know, your confirmation and. Mm-hmm you know, sort of making that mm-hmm. a real sort of, you know, coming of age thing. Mm-hmm. What else was going on? What were you into? What were you doing? So I was, as you You're you're trying saying, to get your first guitar, weren't you? Yes. So for my, for my confirmation, I, I saved up the money, took the money. Um, was so excited, could not wait. And I had, I had pre-chosen a guitar. So at this point, I had already, you know, I was, I was a child who really loved music, was so into music. I'd already played piano for, for a long time at that point, I played cello and things like that, and I was wanting a guitar because I thought it was so 
cool mm-hmm. and I was really into it. Um and the boy across the street who was who was uh, one of my best childhood friends um had a guitar from his big brother and I was over in his house one day and he was like, Would he see this? And uh that sounds dodgy, but he was like, like would he see would he see what I can what I can play? And he got this guitar out and he played Smells Like Teen Spirit mm-hmm. and I mean he was like, oh, it's so cool. It's like Nirvana and all. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know who Nirvana was. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I just thought, oh my you God. You were like, Nirvana, yeah, I love him. Yeah, yeah. I was like, he is brilliant. He is just <laughs> inspirational. Um, but I just was like, that is so cool. That is really cool. I think I could do that. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I could do it better. So I was like, <laughs> I really feel like this is what I should be doing. So saved up the confirmation money, picked out my guitar. It was a beautiful... Um, purple electric guitar from Argus mm-hmm. um, with a little shiny kind of pick garden things on it so I went and got it and picked it up and first day I got it wrote a song started writing song and then from then on like that was my life hobby I just constantly wrote songs and I was quite obsessed with it and I was actually going to big school I was very kind of I was, I was a very shy child and I was going to big school in a different city and not knowing anybody and all this and I was very anxious about it so I spent loads of my time writing songs about kind of that, that transition and stuff so I feel like that has even though it was like you know could have been just a, a hobby I was doing as a kid I feel like it really has affected you know what I've gone on to do and so you, were you wanting to, were you already writing like original songs mm-hmm. before you had the guitar Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you wanted though to kind of rock it up. So yeah. was this an electric from uh, an electric from, so from Argus? You could imagine how it sounded. I mean, horrendous. Sure, it was great. So and I mean, when I got it, I I couldn't play it at that point. So I I started to teach myself how to play it and things. And um, I had you know some some previous songwriting experience on the piano, um, which uh, I mean the songs were horrendous, but I really wanted to you know make thing make things a wee bit cooler with a guitar. You know, I just thought piano was a bit sedate for me mm. and I thought you know to, to Victoria Wood you wanted to kind exactly. of exactly would you would, would you like take inspiration from Victoria Wood because that's what I think of whenever I kind of watch you doing your stuff well it, it, it is funny that you say that because when I was uh, when I was a kid I heard that song the duet of Barry and Frida which is the most <laughs> incredible song the let's do it song yeah. um but I mean, I didn't know who Victoria Wood was. I just heard that once. I think it was on TV once as a child. And like, it definitely made an impression on me. Like, mm. I remember thinking, that's amazing. That's great. I didn't get any of the jokes, of course, but yeah. I knew it was funny from how the audience were yeah, reacting. Yeah. Um, And then when I started doing songs and musical comedy, um, I somehow I hadn't really come across Victoria Wood mm-hmm. a, a, a again um, because obviously it wasn't wasn't my ear and things mm-hmm. and then people started to say to me oh you're very like Victoria Wood ah. so then I looked her up kind of after the fact yeah, um, yeah. so now like she's definitely I think she's incredible but yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say she'd kick things off because I hadn't heard of her yeah <laughs> well that's it so, yeah it's funny that whenever you know you grow up and you miss something because it was before your yes. time because we didn't have like ready access certainly when I was growing up and I'd be a bit older where we couldn't go onto YouTube and just check exactly. out everything by a certain yeah. person so you knew of them yeah. and then it would take a while like this, the one for me that people somebody mentioned and then I went back and checked a load of, out of was Jake Thackeray who was uh-huh. a bit more underground um, but like he's, he's sort of troubadour style on the nylon guitar um, probably around Victoria Woods era and stuff like that, but um, like I just he's one of those ones where I went back and binged on everything that yeah. he's ever done. Then yeah. having not known anything growing mm-hmm. up, and then going, "Geez, that was what was out there." You know, it's a real lack of access to that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it was the same. It was the same for me. Yeah. So going into from primary school into secondary school, then how did you find that transition? Were you still rocking your beige kind of look, or was that just very so- of the moment? So it, it was quite off the moment, you know, it was kind of like a one time, as you say, statement piece, you know, yeah. so that was something special. But after that, I became very like Avril Lavigne was my style icon, mm. you know, um, and I was kind of, you know, the, the nets around the arms, the the incredibly baggy trousers, you know, they're all ripped up the back and, yeah, and yeah. all rain marks. And um, <laughs> I, I wore a tie at one point and uh, I just, I think I looked like a, <laughs> a, a mini waiter or something, but I was kind of very into that kind of almost emo, you know, you think you're alternative, but you're dressing yeah. like every Everybody single else, yeah. band of the moment, yeah. you know. So that was very much my style. So yes, I did go to, um, I went to school then and, um, and I did find it hard because I went I went to school in Derry and I'm from Strabane and I found the transition of going to a new place 
uh, with people that I didn't know that was quite far away from me and um, people who were definitely of a very different background from what I grew up. Mm -hmm. I definitely found that hard. So if anything, um, that probably pushed me more into music. And I was quite, you know, it's always funny now, obviously when I'm doing stuff on stage and I know probably people wouldn't think the same about you, but I would have been really quiet and really shy. Mm -hmm. And I think... If you're like that, music's really good because yeah. you can just go off and do it by yourself. Do you totally. know the totally. the downside for me was having to actually perform. Yeah, but you know the the, <laughs> the good part of it was you know you could always go off and entertain yourself, and you actually didn't really need anyone if you were creating stuff. So I find that that was a really um, beneficial thing for me. Mm. You know, I was yeah. I, I, people do uh, maybe it's an assumption they made mm -hmm. about you as well, where they think, oh, you must have been so like going yeah, to school yeah. and you know the. You know, but I I was kind of the class clown, but it was very quiet in between. Mm. Where I would like, I wouldn't really be great at talking to people yeah. and like being put myself out there and you know getting in with all the groups. But then I would see a really good opportunity for you know like a prank uh, yeah. and something in me just went go and do it. Yeah, and it it, it must have been a, a a bit of an attention thing you wanted because you weren't getting it yeah. any other times. Yeah, and you would do it, and I always remember just trying to choose the right moment and then just. You know, going for go it. for it. Were you were you a class clown in that way, or do you were totally quiet? I mean, I, I probably there probably would have been moments. I probably would have been the same. Not definitely not with pranks, but um, with kind of you know we comments and stuff or like you know we witty remarks and that kind of thing. And and you know when I'm with my friends and stuff now at the minute as well, or when I'm with my family, um, I'm probably still the same. So I'm I'm quite quiet in mm. the conversation and things, but just say you know, something funny every so often. Like, that's kind of... And I think, you know, I was definitely like that at school, if not more on the quiet side. But I guess it's like when you're with your when you're with your mates and stuff, you feel a wee bit more confident. Mm. But I went back to my school recently. Um, They asked me to come back and do a talk for one of the classes about why you should do English for A-level. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it was my favourite subject. I love my teacher and she was my form teacher. And um, I always felt really comfortable with her and I really liked her. I, I felt like she kind of gave me a lot of confidence because, you know, she kind of encouraged me and things like that. Um, but when I went back and talked to the class, she was just saying like, I can't, you know, you're, you're so different. Like you, you never would have put your hand up. And I always had this thing in school, always was like, oh, I know the answer, but I don't want to put my hand up because I don't have to speak in front yeah, of people. Yeah. So I probably was... A little bit like that, maybe the odd remark, but generally on the on the whole, quite quite quiet, mm. you know. I treated it like um like a panel show, like QI or something. <laughs> yes. You were the quiet one, but then whenever you saw an opportunity to come, you that know, was to your make, time to shine. When really there was people that are just trying to learn, and I was just sitting thinking, what, what is the funniest thing I could say? I was probably a wee shit, like to be honest. Yeah, you know, you're like I'm this sure. is research for the career. I've yet to be asked back by my school, <laughs> <laughs> but I think when they do it, it'll be to come back and clean up some graffiti they've discovered. Uh, they're worried <laughs> you're gonna prank. They're like, don't bring him back. <laughs> yeah, don't bring about all the amount of pranks we did. We could do a whole friggin' <laughs> podcast on the amount of pranks. Greg Z, any stats or anything you want to throw in from yeah. 2003? Well, I just wanted to ask a question to Emer actually, because I'm thinking you're talking about writing music when you were 12. I mean, that's astonishing, writing lyrics. And I think back to the lyrics that I was not writing, but that my prints were on in my own sort of first band, and mm -hmm. they're astonishing. Our kind of opening gambit was a song that was anti racism, but was a racist song. Oh, wow, yep. Do you know what I mean? You know, I know, you know exactly what and, you mean. And, 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 and if I was to, to tell you the lyrics of that song, I would cringe so much I might actually disappear. <laughs> it was it was a racist anthem yes. dressed up as an yes. anti racist song. Oh, wow. Um, um, so, what kind of lyrics were you writing as a 12 year old? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a sample? There's got to be some gold in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely could. Um, so I actually started long before 12. I was quite a senior songwriter once I got to 12. So in my in my street, we, we've, I lived in a very small um, street or a, a cul-de-sac for people who wanted to make it a little bit posh, but it was a street. <laughs> and uh, I recruited my sister and two of the other girls in the street to be in a band. Um, and they were the backup dancers really I I felt for me like music was my chance to shine because it was so yeah. quiet the rest of the time if we did anything in a band I wanted to be like front and centre of the mm -hmm. band so I wrote us songs and came up with our names our first name was actually Red Devils because I too was a Manchester United <laughs> oh, no fan. Way. Red Devils uh, and I was very then, subtle yeah. very subtle I was then concerned about um copyright and getting in trouble so I changed the name <laughs> to Cool Kids Cool with a K uh, I didn't know about Cool and the Gang at the time but I, I thought that was a great name so the four of us were in a band um, they danced I wrote the songs wrote the music and uh, uh, and and performed and tried to get them to harmonise but that was um, impossible so this was the chorus, basically. This was it the was blueprint for the chorus. You were Jim Core. I was Jim. Yeah. Um, I was Jim. 
Uh, not the same views as him back. Well, maybe back then I did have the same views as him because I wasn't very smart. But yeah, um, so one of our first songs um, was called... Now, my sister's birthday is the day before Valentine's Day. Is this the name of the song? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, my sister's birthday. Got a catchy chorus. That, that, yeah. that, 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 that was the sequel. <laughs> so um, this is the context for the song. Okay. My sister's birthday is the day before Valentine's Day. She's 18 months older than me. Um, and she brought all her friends around, whatever. And they were all doing this stuff. Do you remember back in the day you had this, like, mascara? This probably was 2003. No, probably sooner. Do you know the mascara? And you used to put it in your hair. Well, obviously, yeah, Patty, comb through it. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, you understand. You used to, you used yeah. to partake. I don't um, think I ever did it, but, like, I was I was aware, you were like, aware. that this was going on. So they were all doing that. And as they were doing that, I recruited my band members to leave the party and come down to our music room in the house. Um, and it didn't actually involve my sister in that one because it was her birthday. But I got some of the others to come down and um, I wrote a song and it was based on Valentine's and it was <laughs> I was going to sing it there but I'm Sing it all right, all right. There's a guitar Do you want to, do you want to play it? Okay, I didn't have a guitar at that point You know oh, Paddy The music was in my head Is it more of a rap? Oh yeah So <laughs> the chorus was kind of uh, Over and over Will you be my valentine If you promise to be mine Right And then my sister's lines I wrote them Oh no no I asked each person to come up with their own lines And this was my sister's line which shows you how great of a songwriter she is. I know we are only kids, but you can help me take off my ice cream lids. Right, that was literally her line. She's, wow. not, uh, 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 she's yeah, That's music obscene. is not for her. Were you letting her get involved exactly. and then you were going to move that out of the way? Just, oh, I didn't make the final cut. Sorry. Like I didn't, and she wasn't actually there for the first iteration of the song because she was, you know, doing the mascara hair for oh, her birthday. Yeah. So I almost had her involved in the band out of sympathy because music wasn't really her thing. Um, but I just thought four, four band members was more of the time. You know, yeah. you know, be watch the chorus as you say. Uh -huh. So we also had a line, um, something like you can you can come into my house if you are as quiet as a mouse. <laughs> <Was it? laughs> this is getting sinister. It's, it's not it's not great, is it? Like, I, think, no. I mean, I was about seven. <laughs> Quite good. To my, it rhymes. You're quiet as a mouse. So that was the first one, and then I also wrote another hit called "I I Never Met You." Um, and it was really strange. It was, I've never met you. And then the back back and singers would repeat, I've never met you. Um, I've never met you. It has been so long. Didn't make sense because we never met. <laughs> I've never seen you. I've even met King Kong. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I must have just watched I mean, it's not King great, Kong. is it? <laughs> this is brilliant. I must have just watched King Kong. Um, and then my first proper song that I wrote was uh, called Distorted Logic. Wow. Um, and it was... This is like Radiohead kind of... Yes, exactly. Bit of a was, gear change. Yeah, oh, paranoid was, android sort know, of epic. I can see this. Things had got dark after the, the Valentine. Logic. It sounds like a Muse album. That's sort of, it, you know... <laughs> Muse are one of my favorite bands Same of all time. Here. Matt Bellamy was my my hero. So um yeah, when I got into my distorted logic years, things did take a turn. <laughs> what age were you? In, what let's put a, an age on distorted this. Distorted logic. Back. I think I was about thirteen. Okay. But it was quite graphic, and it was um like definitely about things that I hadn't experienced. You know, it was about <laughs> like heartbreak and relationships and all. I'm like I was thirteen. Do you know what I mean? So. But it was it was quite good, and I put it on YouTube, and I got featured on the home page of YouTube, what? and then all these American strangers were messaging me, and I was what? like a kid. So Distorted Logic was actually quite good, you know. It was That's... it was okay, you know. And you you know you still remember all these songs? Like you're obviously able to pull out lyrics. Oh yeah, oh I I remember them. Like you should do it live. You really so, should. <laughs> so clearly the full album. I really do. Do you remember actually? So my my parents were used to me writing songs, leave them all over the house. Um, and do you know the my mum? I had a song on the uh, music from a song on the piano that I've been playing. Um, and my mum came down. She was like, "Emer, can I speak to you?" <laughs> and I was like, "This is the very much uh, musical version of finding your internet browser." <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what it was. Can we have a word about the music on the can we? Piano? And I was like, "Oh my god!" And she says, "You know, <laughs> we need to talk about the the kind of things you're writing. You know, we need to." Wow. And I was like, "You know, 
what's wrong with will you be my valentine yeah. you know what's wrong with and she was like we didn't talk about it um it's the she, quiet as the mouse line isn't it well <laughs> ice, ice cream liz so <laughs> she read ice, it out is it a euphemism <laughs> she read it out right do we have mice in this house <laughs> yeah that we don't know about do i need to get an exterminator need to be very concerned <laughs> <laughs> so she got this piece of paper took, took it out of her pocket and folded it um now i was a child she read it out to me like this <laughs> Woke up with bloodshot eyes, struggled to memorize the way it felt between your thighs, <laughs> pleasure that made you cry. <laughs> right? And I was like, oh, oh, oh. I was like, why are you saying those words? Mom, what? Oh. Right. And I was like, stop, stop, stop. And uh, she was like, why did you write this? And I was like, uh, I like I didn't write that. It was a song that I printed out from. The, it was Maroon Five. I had printed it out. It was one of their songs. And my mom thought that I was like a really young pervert. I was like, right. Oh my god. I'm awful. It was really embarrassing. And we we had it. We did have a. I can understand why she was confused because a few years prior, um, when I had my first boyfriend, um, one of many, um, a wee boy from my cousin's estate, and um, everyone was you know. Doing things to enamor themselves to their their boyfriends, you know, like I don't know, painting their nails or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but not me. Um, I'm not sure how enamored I wanted him to be with me. But I decided to write him a song, and then I thought my songwriting skills aren't quite good enough yet, and I don't want him to think that I'm stupid. So um, one of my favorite artists at the time was Shaggy. No, so yeah. I wrote out the lyrics, one of the choruses of one of his songs, and it was. Oh boy, I love you so. That's, I thought that was sweet. Um, never, never, never gonna let you go. I hope you feel the same way too. And then in brackets at the bottom, love me, love me, love me, sex machine. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it meant. But he was a pupil at my mum's school. Oh. And my mum somehow got word and heard about the lyrics and heard what I'd written. So I got in massive trouble for writing, obviously, a very sexual note to a, 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 a pupil at my mum's school. We were, he was a year older than me at the time. But like I was a kid and I didn't understand. So I can understand why she'd be confused and think that I was continuing yeah. on that kind of... Did you not just blame it in Maroon 5? I should have. And <laughs> I, I, you know, I didn't feel like Adam I could Levine's say it was shaggy because I felt like that was a bad word. You know, I, I, shaggy. Couldn't, I couldn't say... Would you write sex machine but you couldn't say shaggy? <laughs> but I didn't know what sex machine was. Well, like true. I didn't yeah. know what that that, that That actual sex machine was something that that always kind of confused me as a kid. Yeah. Because it was in um, Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. I'm pretty sure he says, yes, I'm a he sex does. machine I'm a sex ready machine. to load. Yeah. And I remember going, like I had visions of like an actual like, like a physical like sort of <laughs> like a factory machine. Just like nothing sexual about it, but just that it made sex. It was like, but how does it make, where does it, what does the sex look like? I could just say coming out in boxes, you know, like a conveyor yeah. belt, but I didn't know what was in the Here's box. This one. What's Here's in the this box? One. That thing about like making a band, yeah. I think any kid that is in any way musical must have gone through a phase where they did that, where they tried to form bands, yeah. and you know it was all about. Because and I remember my sister, um, Claire, who was like has acted in our TV show mm -hmm. and was on um Dairy Girls and everything. She was quite into the sort of music and the performance side of things, and I I was I wasn't playing guitar or anything when I was younger, yeah. and I was not interested. And she was like, "Patrick, we're 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 forming an ABBA tribute band, and you have to be Bjorn." <laughs> I said, like, what do you mean you have to be Bjorn? I was like, Mommy said you have to be Bjorn. So I went straight to confirm. Mommy was like, I never said you have to be Bjorn. And so oh I knew my God. Claire was trying to get me in. So this is a true story. What she did was she'd asked me loads of times over the course of the summer. And I did, like mm -hmm. dodged into that and wouldn't do it. And then one day she came in, I came into the kitchen. I was like, I've been playing football out in the street. And like, do you know when you come in, you're just completely like panting, you want a drink. Uh -huh. And I came in, I was like, I need a drink. We're still playing. It's, you know, it's 15, 12 to us or whatever. And she was like, Patrick. Um, Blackmail. She was like, can you do, can you do your signature? Can you even do a signature? She started it off like I was already in the back foot. Can you even do a signature? I was like. Yeah, she's like, do your <gasps> signature. So I shot a bit of paper and I did, did the signature and I just saw her face turn, like the Grinch, you know, uh -huh. like that big smile. And she unfolded it. I was like, what is this? And she was like, this is a contract. <gasps> and it says, I, Patrick Rafferty, hereby, I swear to God, like hereby declare that I will be Bjorn in all of Claire's performances <laughs> of ABBA. And, and signed Patrick Rafferty. And I was like, no. She, she ran like away with genius. it, locked herself in her room and had, so I, there is video footage. I'm going to have to try and dig it out. Video footage of me reluctantly against my will being Bjorn from ABBA. 
playing a wee Bon Tempe keyboard oh wasn't even God. plugged in with a tie tied around my neck just going like this here <laughs> when is this going to be over and it was being videoed and everything and Claire was doing all the moves her and her is she mate, older than you? two years older that's such big sister vibes oh, she evil totally, villain oh yeah she got me a cracker like that and even that's, the, I would be impressed if it, I was the parent I was part of me was yeah. going this is I did give her a red Adam Ulster as soon as it got on her do you know yeah. on the back yes. smack yeah. and then you know and, and then it was once it did it I cornered her in the kitchen I ran and the, she went to run out the back door and the back door was locked and uh-huh. I I think I leapt in the air and like slam dunked it red hand of Ulster and she had to shout it as you did it red yeah. hand of Ulster bang alright moving on then we're going to do a wee section that we like to call it's my party Okay. so it's going to be we're going to make our best guess at what your party was going to be like would have been like in 2003 but given what you've said, I think we might have got it completely wrong because we're going for we have the top ten from the from your birthday basically in oh, that great, year great. because you get like a real it's a real time capsule mm-hmm. of what was sort of going down mm-hmm. at the time. So this is the, this we're going to do the playlist. So this is your party playlist, the top ten from your birthday. We'll not give your birthday out because you've already given away some data protection stuff. So if you give everything away, then you know. It's That's not. me. But here we go, Rigsy. It's in the autumn of 2003. It's Eimer's birthday. You are 13? Turning 13 in 2003? Well, you're uh, of an age. Th- mm. We're going to give you a gift in a minute. Sadly, it's not an actual gift. It's just an I'm idea 12, of gifts. You're 12, yeah, because you're going from P7. Yeah. Into... So here's the top 10. How many of these songs will feature on the playlist that you have to entertain your party guests? Okay. Um, Nickelback, number 10. Yesterday. So do I say if I like them? Yeah. Which one was it? What was the What's someday? The song? I would wasn't like it? the song. Yeah. Someday. Someday. <sighs> no. no. No, that's not gonna be it. Delta Goodrum. Innocent something or other no. Caribbean right. Evanescence. Bring Go. me back to life. Going under. No. No. I, I thought you would have been all over Evanescence. No. Big In brothers, Italy. baby boy. Baby Boy, Big Brothers. I've never even heard of that. No, neither have I. Big Brothers, I saw their, I totally forgot about them and they're doing that thing back to the 80s and 90s kind yeah. of like tour. It's going to be in the SSE. Jamelia, Superstar. Yes. yes. Now we're talking, where's the, where's the girl bands? Come on. Elvis Rubbernecking. So this is the time that, that, that David Holmes from Belfast kind of accidentally rejuvenated Elvis's career and he started having like top 10 singles. Is that, because <laughs> yeah, there was a remix and that was Rubbernecking remixed for, it was for an advert, no, I was, think. Well, yeah, but previous to that, a little, a com- little less conversation. A little less conversation. Oh yeah, so good. By, for um, the Ocean's Eleven films and then that mm-hmm. got everybody back into Elvis. But that one, no. Dido, White Flag. Yes, listened to it yesterday. Really? Mm-hmm. Why were you listening to Dido yesterday, Emer? It's a classic song. It's not song. a crime, is it? There no, it's not. It just seems no. quite usual. Well, Absolute well. banger at number three. Rachel Stevens, Sweet Dreams by L.A. Yes! yes. That was one of my favourite songs <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you'll have that. You'll have a bit yeah. of Jamelia, a bit of Dido. Yeah. Um, number two, The Darkness, I believe, in a thing called Love. Yes, my favourite song of all time. Really? Get up! Yeah. Happy days. Wow. Absolutely love it. Talking my language. And number one, let's see if you can do name that tune. I oh spent God. 40 quid in this xylophone. God damn. <laughs> He's gonna... Let's see if you can play that tune. Well, I, I I Determined. I, I haven't reser- re- researched it. I haven't um, been um, rehearsing it. Is this it. just freestyle? You haven't rehearsed it, okay. Let's see. Let's see. I need to start here. Da, 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 da. That's wrong. That's not it. Yep. Did you get the gist? That's number one. Absolute banger. DJ on Saturday night played it. Took the roof off. Sounds so familiar. Sing a wee bit of it for me. be brilliant if we can't move on until we get this <laughs> and the last 45 minutes of the podcast is just us it's a rap so it's difficult to play the, the melody of it oh okay it's oh, a no, rap I'll give you, okay I'll give you, the, give you a bit of melody I feel that the quality of the session musician here is <laughs> we need to pick somebody else yeah, yeah. The, the, the main bit goes Oh, yes. I got just that bit. And this is a 2003 hit. Big, 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 the massive hit. The biggest song hit. of the year, I think. 
dun, 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 dun. Oh, where's Love Black Eyed Peas? Yes. I wanted to get it from him, just make it two <laughs> and I played the guitar melody. <laughs> it, was, it was all in the foot. I got the... It was, he it got was the, the drums. What's wrong with the world, dun, dun, dun. mama? Yeah. People living like... Brilliant. I was a massive Black Eyed Peas fan. I absolutely loved them. You can um, get that. Where is the love, uh, No, guys? to be fair, it doesn't sound anything like... Where is it? Yeah, where is the love? And I... This is going to sound like a lie, but I listened to that two days ago in the show. A lot of my playlists seem to be early noughties. Okay. Um, and I absolutely love Black Eyed Peas. So Black Eyed Peas, The Darkness, and Dido's three, and Jamelia Superstar. The top three there were, were all hits for you. LAX, 100%. Jamelia, top five. LAX, actually. I think, was an underrated. It was brilliant. And I, I love Rachel Stevens. Yeah. I think Rachel Stevens was my first official um crush I really do, i do think so yeah, yeah she was one of mine but she wasn't my first official oh, but she, yeah she, like I, how did you I, describe I, earlier on <laughs> I, totally, I said she was the pick of the bunch <laughs> when talking about the s club seven right well, I, sounded I, very I, chauvinistic but i was taking I myself back to no, no, wow. no, she was <laughs> just, like like you just got the there line was the tall one, Joe. Have, then there was hannah who was no deserted. hannah was the tall there one was, no no hannah, hannah was going hannah was going out with paul did she not go out with David Schwimmer in the end? No, Hannah went. Yes, oh, Hannah's going out with Paul. Yeah, and then the, who was the black haired girl? She went Tina. Ended up with, Tina went out with David Schwimmer. Oh no, Tina! Did she? She, Tina she was him. my. Um, she was the pick of the bunch. Yeah. Originally, but I, I had could, a habit. I could see you with Tina. <laughs> All right, why? <laughs> because she's both had the whole dark hair thing going on, and that's a, that's, that's a just like everybody. <laughs> just like everybody in their in their you know everyone should stick but to their own. If you have Tina, <laughs> yeah. then you. you you can take Tina out of the equation. For, I, never, I didn't know. No, like Tina, Tina was, I had a thing, um, and this applies to every facet of my life, where I'll go, you know, and you go into, you go, this is really awful, I can't believe what it says. You go into a restaurant and you go, I'm going to get like the, the second or third best sort of bottle of wine or whatever. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Tina wasn't the one, it was the equivalent yeah. of Fancy and Ringo. Because you sort of okay. go, right, uh-huh. I'm not going to go for, I'm not going to go for Paul. You've ruled yourself out now, if she ever hears that, if she ever hears. Like, what, imagine, what imagine, imagine, imagine Tina's like, oh, you're like, oh, I, I really love you, Tina. And she, you're like, mm, but it's because <laughs> you're not the best, so no one else will yep. want you. Yeah, out of S Club 7, you're S Club 3. You give yourself He's a trying to position chance. himself in a better, yeah, <laughs> that so, says yeah. a lot about so your I confidence, went, you know, I can't. Yeah, I know it's terrible. <laughs> it's, this is why hopefully you'll be forgiven for such a horrendous approach. But th- that was the exact. It was a confidence thing. It's like I can't. Obviously, I can't fancy Rachel Stevens. But it's also a bit like you know trying to be a bit alternative, yeah. a bit of a contrary. Yeah. I didn't I'm have that at all. Tina. I thought you know Rachel Stevens. You know she came to Strabane. How do we look Did at me? And I was eleven. We would be course. soulmates. Yeah, you know? that would be it. Yeah. Our confidence clearly so wasn't just, the same. Just, <laughs> that's just arrogance and cockiness. See if you had to go on for Tina. <laughs> Different story. Well, I would have had a chance with Tina. The second part of our bringing you back to the party mm-hmm. is... Well, I haven't given her a gift yet. Her a gift oh, yes, the second, is still, the second part is the gift before you then. Ru- ruin, before you ruin the, the party, Patty's going to ruin the absolute vibe of the party. So, <laughs> I, are you, you an like early me? adopter with technology? Were you a gadgety type? Somebody in your, yes. um, you know, so you're obviously um, recording videos and stuff and, and making yep. music. So, you, were you a bit kind of techy? Yes, I was. I was techy, but I was constrained by my... Um, non-existent budget and um parents, but I was I was techy. Okay, so I'm going to give you an option of gifts. Okay, okay. you can uh, all of these things were were breaking through in 2003. You can either have Sky Plus, which oh. to me is like you know that's the invention, that's the game changer for me. I'm not a, I'm not much of a TV watcher. Uh, you can have an early iPod, or you can have an early camera phone. I would have my first camera phone in 2003. It was a flip phone. It was a sharp one. So you can go, which of those three would you like at the age of 12? Sky Plus, you're going to have to get into subscriptions and stuff. And also, I would I just... I could afford Sky Plus, do you know what I mean? You could or you could. could not. At, at 12? No. 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 I know... It's a gift. You're being your... You know, it's you, you got the subscription for a year, right? Well, actually, if we're thinking about it in business terms, that's quite a good gift because... Riggs is going to have to pay for that for, yeah. for a We're year. We're not actually doing this now. I just have to... Oh, this isn't real? <laughs> right, okay. This is very much um, make-believe. We did discuss getting gifts for yeah, our Yeah, like we trinkets and for stuff like iPad. that. But we decided we couldn't be ours. Well, definitely not the Sky Plus because okay. the only thing I ever used Sky for was playing bed, Beehive Bedlam. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that game? Big yeah. fan, but never actually really watched it. Um, the, so the bamboozle of Sky Plus. Did you ever remember Bamboozle? No, Teletext? No. 
Teletext Bamboozle. You would, I can't remember what the number remember was. Tele- or, or Wonder Years 2003. I know. Teletext went, was, was pretty much defunct about five years later. Nobody was using it. Aww. But Bamboozle was like a quiz. My, never, dad's, never my dad still uses it to this day. Bamboozle? No. <laughs> Teletext. <laughs> oh, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was like, I ain't going to get on this. Who's who's hooking him up? No, he's, who's he's his... still... Uh, he, Teletext. You know, I think Teletext is basically a bespoke ser- service for my father. Being the only <laughs> They're person. just running a friend. Yeah. Um, so right so here. of those well I would like I would like the phone and the iPod um, very difficult the, the thing with the camera phones though back then it was like taking a picture through a sock you know it yeah. was yeah. really <laughs> ridiculous quality yeah could, and could, you had to attach them I in the call centre I worked in I had the cell phones and, and the benefits were like well this one comes with an attachable camera and you, you know had like, to we had the to, you had to put it in and then like hold it in tight and take a photograph and then you know but that we sold the benefit as because you don't have to take the camera all the time you know because then the bulkier ones had cameras that's on. like yeah. a flight of the Concords and there's a has a camera phone and it's just a really old mobile phone sellotape to a disposable <laughs> camera that's a lit- <laughs> Pretty much exactly what yeah. that was. So, uh, can the phone take videos? No, it's a, it's a, it's two thousand and three. You're well, getting a the camera phone, but you'll be the only no, you'll be the only person that can take photos though in two thousand and three. Or you can get you can be the first person in your class to get an iPod. I will go with what I was the which of those was the first thing I got, and I think in two thousand and three or whatever, I got the first iteration, whatever it was, of the iPod Nano. Uh-huh. The very first. I don't and think it, that would have been 2003. It was, but well, I'm not sure when it was, but I was a teen. But it was the one that was the small one, and it was yeah. the first time the metal was coloured. Ah, I yeah, got that's the first way, one that. way on. You're getting the, you're getting the, the big white one. The with big, the big chunky big, one? Yeah, with the well, I did always want. I did always want one of those, so I will, I'll, yeah, I'll that's definitely go with that. Need that for the music, yeah. Yeah, the music. The very first iPod I got, I was the first person in um, the place I worked to get an iPod, and I was really uh, excited about it. And um, I was showing everybody and I got back into to my car and I put it on the roof of the car and opened the car <gasps> and I was putting stuff in and then I drove off and it fell off and I didn't know what had fallen off and then <laughs> so I put a reverse back in so I reverse back into the carpet space and reversed it with the Ooh, Oh my That God. sounds very very on brand. Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> and was it... Uh, can't the, deny that funny. One of the big chunky ones? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that is devastating. Just did your car like bump going over it it was that yeah. big like that was <laughs> the technology. It was, still, it was, it was, still, in, it was still in the someone. box so it did, I, but I did d- oh. damage it not beyond repair. Oh. Now, when I well, I did get one of those big chunky iPods when I went to uni. Yeah. So I did get one then. Do you know to to put on a holder in your car that you could plug into the cigarette lighter to, to yeah. make it work? Do you remember those? Yeah. And my car was someone smashed my window and broke into my car and stole the iPod. The iPod, and I was so offended because the other thing I had in the car was a Justified CD, which was Justin Timberlake's <laughs> album. <laughs> and they took it out. They took the CD out of the case and threw it back in the car. <laughs> I thought the disrespect. The disrespect. You wanted to check the track listing to see if it had <laughs> yeah. sexy back on it. Uh, that would be one of my just. I think Crimey River was two thousand and three. You know, oh, those are more Britney of my era. vibes. You know, that he, ca- that he had the apologize and for. Me against the music was two thousand and three. Britney and Madonna. Oh, you remember that? Yes, you remember the kiss. And, all. The kiss. Yep. and I saw it in the news agents on the paper. I went to my granny and nearly died. I was like, "What is that?" <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that cool. before. With um, there's, there was two incidences of fake lesbianism in 2003. Tattoo, tattoo, is the other tattoo, yeah, very tattoo. formative. I loved that video. It yes. was, uh, it, it they, was like, but they weren't. They weren't gay. They were, no, they no. weren't. The way you said there was two incidences of fake lesbianism in 2003, as if there was only these two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just two, these two, two on record notable. on the historical. Yeah. So that was there was Britney and um, Britney Madonna, Madonna, Madonna um, and then Amadou they Smooch. did Christina Aguilera got in on the act up for like the VMAs or something. She was she there was, was the left three out. of them. No, the, the, she she, Madonna kissed out. both. Yeah. I don't know if they all did it at the same time. Maybe it's just, just isn't that I've... so strange though. But that tattoo song, like <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great song. But yeah. that video was like because I remember like p- people talking about it. Mm. Like, Oh my god, do you see that video? Oh my god, yep. do you see those two girls and they were kissing? Oh my god, what's yeah. that about? Like I don't think we had like Sky or NTL or anything at that stage and mm-hmm. it was on like MTV loads and I think I sort of asked for and <laughs> made a case for it, not on that song, but that was the end that game. Was, was yeah. I want to be able to see this in my yeah. own house, you know, and I think we did end up getting a- chipped NTL, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> one of the chipped ones like come in and like, Mommy, like, is this NTL chipped? It's like, no, it's not. Like, why is the program guide and like <laughs> Arabic it's yeah. scrolling from right to left I have to read it from right to left to, to learn a different language remember so I can used watch to get everything like I remember my mum got us um, CD I wanted CDs for Christmas one year maybe that was 2003 but it was M&M's uh, was it like called Curtain Call or Encore or something like that right um, 
and it was uh, all these CDs, but I opened them and they were just all white with yeah, like you know, Scrolled a family member's handwriting. Yeah. And I was like, this they, is so weird, you know. But but it was so you know, it was cheap, they're cheap, free, yeah. Because yeah. I remember getting for we, I was we never had that much money. What ha- what happened is I would get the console that everybody got last year, you know, the yes. year there because the price always was really inflated, yeah. and then it came down. And I remember when I got a PlayStation for the first time. And I was like trying to suss out, is this chipped? You know, mm. because that was the whole thing. Was like or you didn't want to have to tell your mates one. mine's chipped, mine's chipped. Yeah. And I was like looking and going, and the, the big sign that it was definitely chipped was that you knowing that you got games. You mm-hmm. would say to your mates, "How many games did you get? I got three games. I got five. I got one game. I, <laughs> I got a hundred, a hundred games in a yeah. Curly's bag, <laughs> you know, a knotted Curly's bag that you had to like, and they were yeah. all like." Blank. Yeah, there was like yeah. you just had it was pot luck. I wanted Put to play Tomb Raider and they ended up watching, you know, somebody's honeymoon video, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Bernie and fucking John's honeymoon oh, two thousand and three. Tomb Raider was the best I game. T- Tomb Raider the and Lara Croft. Locking your man in the in the, oh, in the, in the, the fridge. Wee, the wee, and wee then or, drowning yeah, him in the pool. Butler, yeah. That was so good. Yeah. So for context for anybody who doesn't get it, is that you just had this wee butler that followed it her was, around I mean, when it was you were quite training. Sadistic. Yes, yes, he followed but he, he her. He did around. nothing. He did no. wasn't useful for anything, but he followed you, and then you would like go into the freezer and lock him in the freezer. Yeah, so you would just... run into the freezer, so he would follow you in to serve you, and yeah. then because we were all sick, you would run out of the freezer, yeah. put him in, and lock him, and let him freeze to death. Like that was awful. That was that's, that sounds like things that Nigel actually did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> assault in the game. You know? That's true. <laughs> yeah. So Mark it's off. it's Emer's birthday in two thousand three. She's just been given her iPod. It's loaded with a bit of darkness. Rachel Stevens. Everybody's having a good time, and then the dodgy relative walks in. Yes, this this section of your party is called Guess Who is Dead. Guess Who's Dead? Oh, you know when I love granny... this game. We played this all the time because my dad's oh. a funeral director. So you no know, way. yeah. Brilliant. So I always oh, know who's you dead. Might, you may be all over this one. Then you probably know. But basically, your granny would come in mm-hmm. and she would be the one that would want to tell everybody did you hear who's dead uh-huh. can we just blow out the candles first granny and she we'll loves get the crack yeah. yeah so we're gonna just we just pulled up the, the celebrity that died yeah it's not like a relative celebrity. do you remember yeah. when your <laughs> yeah. your great auntie died was <laughs> my auntie Ethel dead is we're gonna give you five quotes from dead relatives and you're gonna tell us which one you no know, so we're just we just decided to pick a celebrity you, okay. who, which one died closest so we're yeah. gonna try and maybe guess Will we be able to guess who this one is? I it's know. it's well, it's. Well, I'll, I'll give you. I'll jump in and give you some clues. I haven't prepared for this. Okay, clues. Yo, yes, you're both right. absolutely. Oh, he's gonna play the again. I was going to do. He's going to get. <laughs> I was going to guess it's through Rigsy, the xylophone. get the xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> No. It's going to be like, uh, the, my my vision for Guess mm-hmm. Who's Dead is that it's like Guess Who, where you say, did, did they wear a hat? Is it a man? Oh. But I think you visually need to be flipping everything down. Yeah. And yes. we just didn't have the time or the budget to make a guess who of dead celebrities. But that'd be, that'd be a good idea. Pick a date. I think that is a, I think that is a good idea. Patented. Copyright. Two thousand. On, on the back of them all, it could be, you know, when you're flipping them down, it could be little um, gravestones, you know? Yeah. That would be, you know, nice aesthetic. Visually mm-hmm. brilliant. These two really are talking a serious amount of bollocks. We'll, we, well, you're you're this gonna be is, cut we're out. Workshop and business. Get in on the ground floor. We'll we'll be making millions and rigs. I can like, actually play the xylophone better than that, so I can come in instead yeah. of right. <laughs> Guess who's dead? I'll give you some clues. Um, this is somebody who you might not you might not be on your on your consciousness. It's certainly not somebody you'll, you'll think about on a regular basis, and you might not even if I asked you when did this person die, you it's very unlikely you'd be mm. able to tell. But this person is responsible. For somebody you probably talk about or think about, or somebody's family that you talk about. Robert about. Kardashian. Robert Kardashian. <laughs> wow. Do you know what I said? Family. I thought that was too much of a no, giveaway. It's, it's whatever you said. He is responsible, and I was like, it's Robert Kardashian. Jesus. So Robert Kardashian. You must died remember from your birthday. Very, very somebody close coming in saying, "Guess who's dead?" Robert Kardashian. Guess who's dead? But you wouldn't do it because people didn't really. No, because know obviously the Kardashians weren't famous back then, and I did well. I mean, he, not was, he was quite a big, big deal. in America, like I suppose. Yes, but whenever I was, I mean, when I was, when was the O.J. Simpson trial? Nineteen ninety-four. No, uh, the, the so incident. I was three. I was Do you know where I was when that happened? Nineteen ninety-four. Were you were you in California in the jury? or wherever it was? No, were not, you not the in not the, the court case. I was at the World Cup in the states. So I was in the states whenever that all happened in ninety-four. Wow. 94, yeah. Ah, oh yes, wow. that's right. Yeah. So um, that was the bre- the the I love the question that comes from that opening ceremony. Um, Dana Ross. With, yeah, <laughs> they would say that's the the question goes. Somebody will ask, um, who missed a penalty at the 
World Cup 1994 and also and the name how many number one but also had X number of number one hits and everybody's all oh, you know like like yeah. proper sports yeah. like hold on Glenn Hoddle Glenn Hoddle <laughs> had a number one diamond lights like Gascon. no but he wasn't at that and I was like oh and they really think it and then see when you go down or off like ah oh, fuck off I <laughs> think it's one of those ones you let them stew no no shh 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 that's I'm a great get question get it. but down or off but I always remember watching that and she run up and the nets the nets were huge as well yeah and the mom was going like this, and it was all part of the ceremony. And she had the, the radio mic, and she was, yeah. I can't remember what she was singing. Maybe I'm coming out or something. And she ran up, and she hit a penalty from it must have been five yards, and it went wide. <laughs> but the nets were set to explode. <laughs> so the nets <laughs> fell apart, and all confetti <laughs> came out. But she I love it. everybody sort of questions that. I mean, what did you. How do you plan that they should have went? No, hold on no, a second. That's what I mean. That take, has it to win. Win. Di- take it again. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I would have been. I would have been sitting with the trigger, going, "I'm not as a football fan. I'm not <laughs> no, making these nets explode. So I'm sorry. You know, like it's not realistic. You know, she, hey, it's she America. Has, she has Come to on. Do it again. It's America. No one knows. That's why oh they were so God. shit at football for so long because they thought that if you missed a penalty, it was still good. Yay. Yeah. Let yeah. Let the nets explode. That wasn't oh that long after in America they tried to reinvent what the penalty was. He the, started from the halfway line and then you ran up. Did you ever see that penalty? For the penalty, yeah. So the penalty so, shootouts and they weren't exciting enough. Me and Paddy Boston to tell this yeah, story. The, 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 the dynamic here, but you played for <laughs> the Ravens, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Rigsy's team. Okay, Rigsy's team. So yeah. we're not we're not boring you with football chat. Obviously, oh, no, United please, fan as well. Ahead. But they did this thing where th- instead of a penalty, they thought this is too boring. They wanted to make it more showbiz. So yeah. they basically you had to take the ball from the halfway line, run up. You had to do a musical number. During a joke. <laughs> you had to run so up. So it was Diana keeper, Ross. Yeah, right. <laughs> you had 10 seconds, right? And the keep from the referee blew his whistle. You uh-huh. had 10 seconds to score. And the keeper had to try and stop you. And he could, couldn't the keeper handball outside the box and everything? No, I don't think the keeper, I don't think so. But the keeper was allowed at some to, point during it to come out. off the line. So yep. you had to sort of take, you had to try and round the keeper or you could shoot early. It's like a hot like I must half look half it up. Early. Yeah. I have questions as I've, in order to try and involve my kids because they've been asking about who you, who you oh, that's so cute. and what are you doing. So they wanted to ask questions. So I have recorded a question from this <laughs> His one. kids are like proper media trained. They're on the TV all the time. Yeah, they're... As a wee bit star I know, I saw your wee boy whenever... I've, I've seen yeah, you have pictures of your wee boy. Literally know him off TV. And I, yeah. I, I like, I give him, tell him, you know, like we'll be chatting about it and I say, he's, I like, what kind of question do you want to ask? And I should record his first time doing it because it's dead natural. And then whenever I say I'm going to record, I'm like, don't turn into a stage kid. Yes. <laughs> it's like, hey, there. It's like, <laughs> and my wife's like, it's not stage me. It is. Just let him do it naturally. So let's see if he nailed it. Right up um, to the mic there. Nice and loud. Here we go. So here's, this is, uh, we'll start with Ronan's question. Here we go. Hey, Emer. Do you have any cringe moments from back then? Slightly, st- slightly stage kid, but that's a good question. Cringe moments from two thousand and three. I feel like we've had a lot of them. The outfits. Have you um, any more left? That's like. <laughs> have I have cringe moments from every every day of my life? Uh, Even just cringe. vaguely back then, like, is there anything you, sp- you specifically remember that you go, "I wish I didn't remember that." Um, definitely. I have. A, I'm not sure if the year was two thousand and three, but. It was around about then, and I was a big Action Man fan. I collected Action Man, mm-hmm. um, and I always, always wanted... Do you remember Dr. X? In the Action Man yeah. franchise? No, yeah. I wasn't so that into it. He had, maybe he wasn't called Dr. X, because is that the X-Men Dr. X? I don't know. But he had this big bionic arm. Oh, um, I remember do him, Do you remember? Yeah. Or, oh, Dr. Gangrene, sorry. But it was filled with gangrene. Not, no, I mean, not not the biological gangrene, but it was filled with, you know, like a green goo. Play. That would have been a brilliant selling point, though. It, <laughs> actual gangrene. Filled with actual gangrene. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, so you could squeeze his arm and it would go, pff, pff, pff. Uh, but do you know like those toys that you squeeze and yeah, it's, you know, it's still like, a, yeah, thing, yeah, but it doesn't actually come out. So I got that as a present from my aunt, along with a body warmer. A black body warmer because I was desperate for a black body warmer. Um and I don't know why. So I was going around wearing my black body warmer. Um and I had a habit of chewing things. Um this makes me sound like there's like there's something wrong with me. But anyway, so I used to chew everything. Like I used to chew like my bunk beds, I used to chew like <laughs> I was waiting on like pens or something. No, like actual the, beds. The wall. I used to <laughs> chew I used to eat my um, I used to stay with my aunt all the time. She smoked and I used to eat all the cigarette butts out her back. I know, and apparently... Sound like a goat? 
Yeah, there's a goat up on the north coast um, that 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 ate cigarette butts, and it's it was deemed to be quite a novelty. Well, it Not probably has a human it probably person. has a nicotine addiction because yeah, um, kids who eat cigarette like I wasn't the only one. I mean, I okay. didn't start the trend. Kids who eat uh, cigarette butts can get a nicotine allergy or um, addiction. So I did that one time. My auntie came up to her room, and I was sitting in a room chewing an ornament with like blood <laughs> down my face. So I loved a wee chew, and um, so I got this doctor get <laughs> green right. So sitting in my body warmer, I think it was at a family party. Um, and this is the moment of my life where I remember feeling the most embarrassed and not quite knowing what to do so I had this toy and I was just sitting there and I was thinking I would love a wee chew at that like I would really love a wee chew that looks great <laughs> for a chew but I didn't want to do it because there were other people around and I thought well just do it like really like dead natural like really in the background and I was quite shy and I didn't like mm. attention and stuff so I lifted it up and was kind of just holding it up here Um. And like I, I took a bite of it and the whole thing exploded, the gangrene exploded and it was probably, you know, horrible yeah, like poison. It was, it was disgusting and it exploded and went all over my mouth, all over my new body warmer. And I was like, how am I supposed to explain? So I was trying to kind of conceal <laughs> this crime that I'd committed. Um, and I remember going to the bathroom and trying to clean it up and all and the, the thing had this wee deflated arm, you know, because it, it wasn't bumped up with the, gran- with the gangrene anymore. And every time I was asked, about that toy um, I then had to lie about it and had to lie about the fact that I tried to eat the arm and, and it exploded um, and every time I think of that memory it makes me really cringe because I felt so <laughs> first of all embarrassed that I'd done something so weird but also I felt so bad about lying so yeah, I really you do you had to keep that lie going yeah like I, I've kept that no lie reason. I mean hopefully hopefully Monty won't listen to this but um, I've kept that lie my whole my whole life and I've felt quite ashamed of I, I don't think either of us expected her to say that no <laughs> <laughs> what did you say never mind what did you expect me to say like oh we're a bad character wow well, that's incredible yeah that's <laughs> true it's true I uh talking about that thing of doing something and then having mm-hmm. to keep a lie yeah I my dad got um used to work in a factory and um they gave him like steel toe cap boots mm. and they were like new it was the first time they got like a, a new pair and he, he had them in the box and brought them home and I remember as a kid I brought them out the back and there was a like a tin tin of paint and yeah. I for some reason decided to kick the tin of paint <gasps> with the shoe right. with the boot just to see if the steel worked and the steel worked but the paint went all over one of the boots so uh, in a panic I threw it. Over, out our, over the wall <laughs> and there's like this sewage kind of river down the back where you can't get into and I threw it in and I went well I've thrown one in it's going to look weird that there's one but not two so I threw the other one as well and then just went that's it that, they're gone and then when he was looking for them I like, what the fuck are and I was just like I just never and I remember just years and years and years and years going by and then we're all like sitting at a house party and the house, all that happened he's like, oh, I remember right he got this pair of steel toe cap boots oh and I told God. the whole story everyone's laughing I could just see him in the corner going do you know I fucking thought I was going mad for years yeah, that's I gas, that's uh, ga- a gaslight isn't it yeah <laughs> you <laughs> gaslighted just like, your dad <laughs> I was just like yep that, you know, is, about oh, there that going. reminds me this is a very obscure story Um, so uh, whenever I used to tape Friday night, kind of late night, um, semi porn off the TV when I was around 14, 15. Maybe a wee bit younger, give myself some credit. <laughs> and um, it was disappointing though, because you, you would be like, you know, um, lesbian night in Channel 4, and you'd think, this is going to be amazing, but it would be like, just like discussion. Fake lesbianism. Panels. No, it would be yeah. all like <laughs> talking about being. Yeah, be like, yeah. You know, like Jermaine being. Greer, like yeah. having a sit down talk about contemporary art and yeah. women's and thought, roles. Wow, in lesbian style. night of Channel 4. <laughs> <laughs> you wasted a whole TDK. Under well, I had, I had a Snow White just to hear this discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so I had I had a video compilation. I've mentioned this before. David's football tape or whatever it was called, and it was really just a compilation of snippets <laughs> of 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 um, softcore <laughs> porn. And um, I had that video, and I, for whatever reason, there was a video, big Man United TV and video thing in my room. So I was able to watch this in my room, and um, I was so ashamed of the fact that I had this tape Catholic guilt basically yeah. I was just going I'm disgusted with myself obviously I'd, I'd watched the video I just thought no that's I'm not I'm never doing that again <laughs> this is this is this is this is disgusting I'm a terrible was human was it like being. a VHS yeah I'm gonna go blind you like unwinding the tape so you can never watch it again no, so I threw the, I threw the video out the window into the um, into the next door which was like kind of almost sort of semi wasteland where I lived and I also <laughs> a bottle a, a bottle of Listerine that um, we had <laughs> guests staying in our house and around the same time uh, we had guests staying in our house and I didn't want to have to 
go out and go to the bathroom and maybe bump into these guests. Oh God, she so peed in the bottle. I've been peeing in the bottle of Listerine, right? And then I threw it out the window as well, right? <laughs> and my dad was doing the gardening and he found the tape and the bottle of Listerine and he came oh, up to Jesus. me and said to me, why why did you throw it? My dad's colorblind. So he, didn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have noticed the so colour. He, he took a big swig. <laughs> and he said to me, why did you throw that video? A perfectly good video you could tape over and then this perfectly good full bottle of Listerine. Because that's a disgrace. You know, you're, that's so wasteful. Drink it. And he became obsessed with this bottle of Listerine that I'd thrown it out. And so I had to put it on the, the, the bedroom had a sink, but it didn't have a toilet, which is why I was pissing the bottle of Listerine. And he became semi-obsessed with me throwing this out. So I had to set the bottle of Listerine <laughs> on the sink. And then every day I just pour a little bit of the piss in the sink. <laughs> just every day. So it get less and less and less. Jesus so eventually, Christ. so there was a bottle of piss on a, in, a, in, a, in a bottle of Listerine sitting in the sink in my bedroom. How do you explain that? A bottle of piss in a Listerine, a li- Listerine bottle full of piss but and a tape. I know it's it's. Oh. I, I I didn't have an explanation for the tape. Just I just want to go. Oh, I threw I threw that tape out because I was um, you know I was. I'm ashamed. Should have blamed it Maroon, Maroon was, you know, Five. It was Maroon I, Five. It was Maroon Five. <laughs> it was Adam Levine. <laughs> yeah, it was like pulling the end off myself watching like fucking Euro trash clips. <laughs> and I, and I, and I, and it was just so disgusting. As I says, I'm never doing that again. And threw the video out the window. <laughs> and then, Why is there a tape of Jermaine Greer? No, it said David's, it David's football team. He wouldn't shoot a check. So it was, he should have made you like, sit down and watch it. it. Was, you know, Come on, me and you's going to go and sit tape. down and watch this tape and enjoy it. <laughs> because, you know, if I thought, the thinking was, if I don't put David's football tape in it, it's going to flag up. Yeah, people up. are going to know, yeah. Yeah, they're going to go, that's, that's got bored. But I like, I like that you actually put your name on it so that if anyone <laughs> found it, they would know it was your name. An address. <laughs> it's just it's David's football tape. <laughs> please return. If, uh, if lost, <laughs> please don't watch, but just return to. It's like a slightly updated version of, you know the way you always find porn magazines in like behind bushes and stuff and everybody yeah. including me has a story about Emer's younger bushes? Emer's younger yeah. you see it, that, that Why was, was a thing that, I've never found anything if you, it, so yeah like they always I think whenever somebody was finished with it you know like in their house they couldn't keep it in their house any longer it was you needed you'd be, to get rid of it guilt. it's like yeah. you'd be so disgusted with yourself but it used to be a and big thing it takes thing at least half an hour for you to want to do it again it so used in, to that, be... in that window you go <laughs> you know it's, it, like, it's like having a hangover going I'm never drinking never again never again but no it used to be a thing like when you come home from school or something one of your mates would come and wrap the door and like your ma would answer and you would come down and you knew they were wanted to tell you something but they needed your mummy to go away Bye. and once she'd go away they'd be like, they'd be like what is it and like there's a porn mag in the bush around the corner holy shit so you'd go out and you'd all go around and like it was like the the holy grail like oh the book God. of kells I but it's never yeah and it was just like no, so, somebody threw it in the bushes that was a thing? oh yeah. absolutely everybody um, you know, of our generation like you too, so you're like it. Throwing the shoes, throwing the boots, <laughs> yeah. throwing your, your bottle of pee in your video, just forget and about else it. is just the magazine. Yeah. I can't believe it. I found that. a video, it says David Soccer Tip <laughs> has to be born. Yeah. You know? Right, last question from this is from Clara. Then she is Clara from, gets Clara. the last, if we get Clara to get the last word. Sure. Oh. Who was your favorite friend back then? Oh, wow. Who was your favorite friend? I could take oh. mine in order. I, I love this question. That's a brilliant you question. Your rank favorite it. friend? Yeah. Well, you had the wee boy across the street. You were saying who had Call the... Did she not mean friend. friend from the sitcom, Friends? No. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> Greg's was getting all... I was you were going to start... You have your list. You have like, your I, could do, I could do mine in order. And I was like, I don't have a, enough to do mine in order. <laughs> How <laughs> clinical <laughs> do you have to be to rank your yeah, friends? I had well, a big table of friends when I was 13. My favorite... TV show friend was Rachel. Uh, yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. I love Rachel. Um, yep. Chandler was, was second place. Monica third, and I didn't care for any of the other. Ross three. was top for me. I didn't, was, Monica, I didn't understand Ross, who funny Rachel Ross was. You know, that's until I was an adult, I didn't. The Gellers, understand, the Gellers you know. in general, just the two of them. So <laughs> Monica is incredible. But my real life friends, who was my? Fa- I was a bit of a loner. Who was this? This painful. Um. My friends were all people on my street. So, Connell, as we've mentioned, mm-hmm. was my friend. Who played um, Nirvana? Who, who plays Music Teen Spirit? Um, McHugh, who was Catherine McHugh, but I like to call her McHugh because my sister's also called Catherine. I don't want to be confused. McHugh was in the band as well, you see. Mm-hmm. Um, and Sinead, they were all the, the people on my street who were my friends. And then I was very sad because when people always used to say, Who's your friend? I'd be like, 
my friends Louise, who's my cousin, and Sean and Connor, who's my brother, and Kitty, who's my sister. So it was basically like saying I don't really have any friends. I was the same. I was kind of like, you know, I felt like I had to like draft people in who were, yeah. and they're like, no, not your cousins. Yeah. You can't. You're like, and everybody's you're like, my okay, cousin. Okay, then I you don't know, have any so friends. Like, is that what you want me to say? I was, I was Ross, kind of saying. Ross, Rachel, yeah. Monica. <laughs> I was going to say, Chandler. what's more embarrassing? <laughs> like, are they not Who's the your friends? Best friend? <laughs> oh, my best friend is Monica. <laughs> 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 someone uh, someone had asked recently who's my best friend it was I think it was for an interview um, and they were like who's your best friend and I was like oh um, I'll be and they were like oh who, who's he and I was like oh it's my dog and they were like no seriously who's your best friend and I was like oh no that is my like that is my answer that is my best friend and I was like do you want like do you want people and I was like Right, Sean. And he was like, all right, who's I? We've been friends long. And I was like, yeah, he's my brother. Like, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> what a sad question. Do you want people? I used to... <laughs> no, do, you, do you want actual, actual people? Right. I used to hit Ooh, weird that's you know? <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, you know, sit beside your best friend, the boss. And I was like... Uh, I remember I, we went on a ski trip one time and I had to sit beside the teacher the whole time and I was uh, sit beside her on the no... ski lift because I had no friends uh, <laughs> I was a wee loner oh, Jesus this has gone taking a dark yeah, twist here well I, I, had to s- I, had, I had to sit beside her and obviously I was a child she was an adult so she's so much bigger than me so the ski lift was always tipped uh, I was remember <laughs> going up and I was being like I have no friends I think no it's slide down towards the teacher and like oh not that way no, oh, not, no. Not that it's, way. The, it's the yeah. equilibrium it's all off anyway but I'll, I'll say um, I'll say my, my friends in the street and we did um, we did do a uh, a strong a song, you know the song S Club, the right yeah. no party. We replace we I say we I <laughs> replaced um the name with the name of our street. Oh. Um <clears throat> and I said like so say our street was called Rigsy because I don't want to say the yeah, yeah. street is my man be raging. But <clears throat> <laughs> it's like so it's like Rigsy, there ain't no party like a Rigsy party. And then I went through each and member of the street and I was like, yeah. Emer's doing her thing. Oh, and then I was like, Shanice getting this down. The best song ever. You, yeah. you Shanice won. getting down on the floor while Kieran's screaming out for more. And then I'd be like, Kieran, shout more. <laughs> more. more. <laughs> you know? And I did it with all the names of the of the of the kids in the street. How to win friends through music. That's exactly, it didn't work. Didn't but work. I, I do and think. end up with a dog. I think it was nice that we had like a straight theme song. In my head, we did anyway. Brilliant. You know, good well, crew. On that note, thanks very much, Emer. It's been really enjoyable chatting to you. No worries. Really Thank you it. so much for having me. The Wonder Year with Patty Raff.